are pretty on Ulysses. There it is. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with my TBR for the Irish Readathon happening in March. I have a lot going on in my reading life in March, but I'm going to attempt to fit in as much Irish literature in and around the edges as I possibly can. So here is not so much a TBR as a pile of possibilities, a la cousin of always doing. It's a wonderful phrase to describe how I prepare for reading challenges like this. This readathon, it's the second annual, I believe, and the co-hosts are Fred Weasley Died Laughing, Leanne Rose, and Elaine Howlin. There are five challenges. I'm going to try to meet at least four. The first one is to read a book by an Irish female writer. For that one, I have chosen this new debut novel, Anne Griffin's When All Is Said, published 2019, and it's about a man in a small Irish town, Morris Hannigan. He's 84 years old, sitting in the pub, wanting to tell his life story to whoever will listen. And it's supposed to be very touching. The second challenge is the one that I will probably miss or not be able to meet, but I may try, and that is to read a book by one of the host's favorite authors, and the three choices are Sarah Rhys Brennan, Louise O'Neill, and Marianne Keyes. And I checked out those three writers. Some of their books are available to me on Scribd. All of them sound, and this is just for my own personal taste, completely awful. I don't think they're going to be for me, but I might try one on audio just to check, but I don't think that... Uh... That will work. Three, read an Irish book that isn't a novel. I have a couple, I have a few choices for this one. Doris and I are reading through the Faber Stories collection, the new 2019 editions of single bound, sh single short stories. And one of them is by Sally Rooney, Mr. Salary. And we are definitely going to be reading this together and, and filming a video discussion about it in March. And probably also Edna O'Brien's Paradise. And I have not read and Edna O'Brien. To be honest, I don't get along with Sally Rooney, but I'm going to give this one an honest try. And there's one other one coming out later, maybe in March. I don't know if I'll get it in time, but if I do, I might try to fit it in, and that is John McGarren's The Country Funeral. And wait a minute, there's two more, but I don't know if they'll be out soon enough. The other one is Julia O'Fowlane's Daughters of Passion. So there's a bunch of Irish bit coming out in these Faber 90 editions. These two I'll get to. They're not novels. I have a third choice, and this one has come to me as recently as about four hours ago. I was walking around in downtown Tokyo, where I live, listening to an audiobook of the African-American playwright Lorraine Hansbury, and found out from listening to this biography that one of her favorite playwrights was Sean O'Casey's 19... 24 play, Juno and the Peacock, which I believe I studied in university. I don't remember anything about it, but she loved how O'Casey embedded so much working class Irish diction into the play, and it sounded really interesting. So I would like to read it. I think probably it's going to, it would end up being a reread for me, and if I can find it, I would like to read that too next month. Number four, read an Irish book that is older than you are. Well, that's hard, because I'm really old. I took a class on Irish literature way back in the day, and one of the short stories that we studied was by the female writing duo, Somerville and Ross, and that was Edith Somerville and Violet Martin, and they were possibly lovers. They were certainly Boston wives in Ireland. Martin Ross died in about 1915, I believe. And they wrote comedic stories of rural life in Ireland, among the Anglo-Irish, and fairly famous, or were in their day. And I wrote a paper for my undergraduate class about how the various biographers had contended with, or had tried to or explain away the possible lesbianism at the heart of their relationship. And I wrote a, my paper on that, and it ended up being published in the... Uh, academic journal so but I've never read more than whatever the one story was I read in that class so you can get free on Kindle their most famous collection of short stories called some experiences of an Irish RM 
originally published in 1899. So that's a few years older than me. And I'm going to try to read those during the Irish Readathon. Woohoo! The last prompt is to read a book with green on the cover. And that was surprisingly hard in terms of what I had to work with. So I did end up buying this, but I have never read an Elizabeth Bowen novel. So here I have The Last September, and there's dark green foliage there. This is, it looks like, set among the Anglo-Irish while the Irish troubles are raging outside their rich estates. They are living it up, and suddenly the worlds collide. Originally published in 1929. It's a big gap in my Irish literary exposure, so I'm going to hopefully rectify that in March. And it has been 20 years or more since I have read a novel by Colm Toybin. And on Scribd, I have his, and one of the covers that's for that is uh, green, so I'll put it up here. Nora Webster. And I can do it on audio or ebook. On Scribd, it's set in Wexford. It's his seventh novel. Nora was widowed at 40 with four children and not enough money. So those are the prompts, and those are my choices with backups, because I am, I am a notorious bailer. I certainly won't get to all of those, but I hope to fulfill four out of the five prompts. I also have backup that would fit with general just Irish reading or whatnot. For example, for a female Irish writer, I have Milkman by Anna Burns. But I have a feeling this is going to be a challenging and hopefully deeply rewarding read, and I don't want to try to fit it in unless you know, and give it the space that it deserves. I have it on audio on Scribd, and I have the paper copy here. So I'm going to do the two in tandem, and I would like to read those at a more luxurious pace. But I have it, so it possibly might fit in. And lastly, another fairly new Irish novel that I haven't heard anybody talking about on BookTube. And that is Future Popes of Ireland by Dara Martin. This is a 2018 release. It's a nice big book. Feels really good in your hands, and I haven't heard anybody talking about it. Makes me a little nervous. Yeah, it's a gay novel. In 1979, Bridget Doyle has one goal left in life, for her family to produce the very first Irish Pope. But unfortunately, the son I think she has her, her uh, heart set on ends up being very, very gay. From what little I've heard about it, it sounds like a kind of John Boyle type romp, com comedic, but hopefully with moving bits as well. And I'd like to try it. In fact, I do have a tentative buddy read, never scheduled, but kind of an, an interest expressed with Marie of MH Books. And so this is just definitely at the bottom of my list because it's big. I don't think I can fit it in, but if I bail on absolutely everything else, then I will try to fit this one in. So Marie, if you're watching, I haven't forgotten about our very tentative buddy read and look forward to, and maybe you've already read it. I don't think so. I follow you on Goodreads, but that is my pile of possibilities for the Irish Readathon. Will you be participating? I've got links to all those announcement videos in the show notes, and I am really stoked to take part. Thanks for watching. Oh.